Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines. Just going to show you how I remove a battery from a tractor. I had a customer the other day ask me um, what to look for and look out for when you take a battery out. And to me it sounds pretty simple, but it's not to a lot of people. So I figured I'd let you guys see what I do to take them out. Uh, this is a Cup Cadet XT1. And this actually had a couple issues. We just picked it up and the battery's dead. And one of the reasons why the battery may be dead and the battery's behind the seat. Some of the batteries are in front of the steering wheel. Some of them are behind the seat. This one actually has a, a battery hold down right here. These are pretty, pretty unique to Cub Cadet, and uh, they're you just have to. They're a little tricky to get them out, but you have to push down one side, and this comes out here. But what I wanted to show you a couple things is let's go with the tools first. I'm going to use a short 7/16 and 3/8, and then a, a longer one if needed 7/16 to take these nuts and bolts off. And of course, me being born with one hand, I use the uh, cordless ratchet that helps me out, and it's got a 3 8 socket on it. All right, and this here is actually my hook tool I made, so I can pull the batteries out a lot easier. And you can use a, a screwdriver and stick them through the hole, the eyelets. Uh, but let me just show you what we got here. First, the battery is loose. This is how this came in. All right, so your battery terminals, very important that your battery terminals are very tight. Right now, if, if the person was using this like this, it, one, it probably won't start because obviously it doesn't right now. And two, it wouldn't get the right charging from the charging system. Um, so these were loose. So you want to tighten these guys up when, you, when you're reinstalling it and make sure they're real tight. Now this one has a, a little bit of a different kind of option. This is actually has 3 8 on one side and 7 16 on another. And the big thing why I showed you two wrenches, sometimes they're hard to get off with a small wrench. You need to leverage with the big wrench. The reason why I'm showing you the big wrench here is this is what people tend to do by mistake is this is positive red is always positive always look at the battery the battery will have the terminal you know positive and negative stamped on the battery it may be a little bit hard to see right now but also uh, over here we got negative now what people do is when they go to take these off they're, they're loosening these and all of a sudden the wrench will go down to the negative and arc itself out that will scare you to death for one and it will also be like welding your wrench to the battery you got to be really careful using long wrenches when you take these off so a short wrench will eliminate that at happening when you're taking them off, right? Or putting them back on again. If you tighten up the side here and you can hit them. If you have a short wrench, that works well and you don't have to worry about arcing it. But uh, as far as getting these off, they're really not tight. So the one side is 7 16 and basically you just, you don't have to do anything as far as what you're disconnecting because basically we're taking the power off the, off the machine right now. But you just pull these off and I usually slide these off to the side and I'll put the nuts back on the batteries or well, at least on one of them but I'm going to use one eyelet to get it out of here once the positive side is off you just take the negative side off now these are loose just use your two wrenches if needed and I'm sure you're going to need them because you really shouldn't have them loose at all I'm going to leave this one on here now if you do this if you put nut and bolt on the negative cable and then you put a nut and bolt into the positive side of the battery you'll know that you can't mess them up when you put them back together again that's just a nice little tip but if you're replacing it there is a couple things you know about replacing now this is a spring-loaded <laughs> arm that actually is a little tricky but if you push it from this side and pull it out there that comes up out of the way that's how they're held in on these some of them have plastic straps now some people you can't it's hard to get these things out sometimes this is what I use this hook for and you could put a screwdriver in there or something but all you gotta do is lift these out lift it right out now as far as if you purchase another battery right very important to take your battery with you i also recommend any tractor should have something that is the cold cranking amps now i'll show you here they have right here it says cca that's cold cranking amps 230. this was born in march of 17 2017. so we're going to try to charge this up even though it was dead i think it was dead because these terminals were not tight and the charging system of the tractor when it's running would not tighten or would not charge up the battery correctly so I'm going to try to charge this and that's what you can do first is you can try charging your battery when you get it out of the machine but what I wanted to show you too is if you're going to replace the battery take your battery with you try to get something that's 250 cold cranking amps or higher <clears throat> and you have to remember the positive and the negative can be 100% reversed if you're not careful. So when you buy a battery, make sure that your positive is on the side, the positive terminal is on the same side as your battery here. You can have them just the opposite, and then when you put your battery, I know John Deere's is a big thing, 
if you buy the wrong, like the positives on this side instead of this side, you can actually put it in wrong and, it, and the cables won't reach to, to positive because this will actually be just the opposite of this. So it's a 50-50 chance. So take your battery with you. Make sure you're getting the, the positive on the, the post on the same side as your old battery. So when you install it, it's going to install correctly. And I definitely would recommend 250 cold cranking amps or above for pretty much anything that they have out there today, except for maybe your, your bigger ag tractors. Um, anything that I work on, the lawn and garden tractors, uh, 250 cold cranking amps are up. Should do it. And as far as uh, putting this back in again, it's the same, same way. Just make sure you tighten everything back up. We'll install it real quick here. Put it in the way it came. You're going to loosen up your bolt that you had on here so you knew which one went where. Okay, you're going to back up a little bit and put your clamp back on to hold your battery in. And that's a little bit hard, but you have to push it forward and then down and it should lock in. This one is being a bear. All right, so that's in. Battery's tight. Then you put your positive cable on. And sometimes these booties, you can move these booties out of the way. Tighten it up. Now I use the electric ratchet that I have. Three eighths on this side. Tight. Make sure it's tight to your hand. Make sure you can't move it. Slide the positive cap over it other side everybody says oh you should you know put one on then the other as long as you're careful you can put either or it doesn't matter tighten them up make sure they're tight and make sure it's stiff and that's pretty much installation and uh, removal of a battery on a tractor thanks for watching